Hello, everybody. Today is day 196, reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 28 and 2 Kings 16 and 17. I'm coming to you today from Ohio, Southern Ohio, as I'm speaking down here uh, at a large camp meeting. So that's the reason the backdrop is a little bit different today. But anyways, today's reading, uh, it's tragic. Israel's rebellion and sins against God, and it continues to escalate and expand. And it seems as though the erosion of the moral conduct of the nation just continues to just fall apart. And they built, again, those high places. And the Bible says that they provoked the Lord of God, the Lord God to wrath. God warned them through the prophets again and again of the danger, where they were heading, what was going on. In fact, this is what we read today, quote, turn from your evil ways and keep his commandments. But there's that one word in there, nevertheless. And it is that word is the killer uh, that we read about in the scriptures. It says, nevertheless, they what? They would not hear the word of God. And nevertheless, they they were stiff-necked and uh, and were hardened of heart. They did not believe in the Lord. They did not believe in the Lord. The Bible tells us that they rejected His word. I mean, they they just refused to hear the word ministering through the prophets. But they had pretty much rejected His word because they were not obeying the statutes and the commandments that had been given to them. They um, refu They followed the idols and uh, the paganistic Baal worship. And in fact, they participated in making idols uh, as unto Baal. And then it says that they caused their sons to pass through the fire. What an incredible concept that they de had deteriorated to such a state that they actually believed that they were worshiping a God and pleasing a God by sacrificing their own sons, and then they practiced witchcraft. All of this is amazing, and all of that, the Bible tells us, provoked God, and God removed them from his sight. Now, that's pretty bad when a people who've been chosen by God come to the point of which they so provoke God and anger and disgust him that the Bible says that he removed them put them out of his sight. Now, this in many ways represents where we are as a nation in the United States of America. If you look at these sins here, there's one difference though, as this is applying to the nation of Israel, his people, uh, I would have to say that we are edging even more closely, not so much as United States of America, because we certainly are practicing all of many of these things here, but I'm speaking about now his people, the new Israel, the church, because we have ourselves come to the point where an overwhelming majority of professing Christians are, are not hearing God. They're, they become stiff necked and hardened of heart. They, have, they do not believe in the Lord because they live their lives as if there is no God. They've rejected his word and increasing numbers of people who simply do not believe that the, God, that the Bible that we have is inspired, that it indeed is uh, infallible. Um, and, and the idolatry has to do more with uh, power and position and, and, um, and pose possessions. And, uh, and the sacrificing of our children, we have to believe, has been all these 49 years of abortion where 68 million babies have been offered uh, sacrifice on our altar. And all of this uh, certainly demonstrates why we're in such a very serious situation. And rather than looking at secular society, I simply say that the church largely has now endorsed many of these compromises, and that's a dangerous thing. And the Bible tells us that God delivered them over. That is what Romans tells us, that God hands them over to a reprobate mind to do uh, the things that they have conjured up in their imaginations. And what happened in this today's reading is that God handed them over to military defeat, and, and the reason that it's given is because they had forgotten God. Now, Israel was confronted by the prophets because we understand that there was this battle, contention between Israel and Judah. And uh, the prophet compelled them that they had to return the children of Judah back to avert the fierce wrath of God. And uh, they, uh, uh, or they would be overturned. They, they were to turn over those captives back to Judah. And... Um, and I think that what we've seen happen is a glimmer of hope, a flicker of hope in the fact that the overturning of Roe v. Wade in America 
in many ways, that curse that's been over this country for 49 years has been broken, even though it's going to the state level. Because of that decision, I believe that we indeed may have averted the fierce wrath of God. At least we've uh, we've stalled it, and uh, it will be interesting what happens. God, we pray to God that we witness a mighty transformation. That indeed the church, the remnant church, will rise up and uh, and will repent and will begin to return back to our heritage and things that we believe. Now the. Judah brought, uh, was brought low, the Bible says, because of moral decline, being continually unfaithful to the Lord. May this not be the state of the church. May this be a warning to us of what we're reading here pertaining to the nation Israel, Israel which indeed was, were his people. And may we be reminded that we are the new Israel and how serious a moment it is for us at this critical time that we, the church, the remnant church, uh, return and that we repent and that indeed we revisit um, those uh, ancient boundaries and those commitments that the Bible outlines and that we would be found to be, maybe we are indeed the only restraining force in America. And if we lose that hedge, uh, there is no hope for America. So praise God, I pray that indeed we will continue to read these passages and we'll be challenged of the importance of, of being found faithful to God individually and then as a church that we indeed will not compromise what we know is the unchanging word of God.